hey guys so welcome to this uh, another tutorial new here so so i just wanted to quickly show you guys how we can do like a projection setup inside nuke and uh, which is useful like in a lot of ways it's a little bit different from 2d tracking uh, i'll also make another video for 2d tracking but in this video we're just gonna see how we can put like 2d elements into like a 3d space uh, inside nuke and uh, basically track that so that's called like a projection system so i have these two footages here i'm just gonna go and quickly take those i actually got this from pixabay i'll put the link down in the description for this footage and uh thank you j shaw fly by drones uh it's a footage i don't want the fade in and fade out 60 to 450 let's just keep it like that And then this is HD, so I'll just change this to HD. So we have this footage here, and uh, I also got this image from Google. Uh, it's just a HD image, and it's very pixelated. It's not like a really good quality, but I just wanted to show you guys an example. So integrate this somewhere like here, maybe. I'm not sure if the perspective will be right because it's just a 2D image, but we'll try to do it. We'll try to attach something do something here and we will use a projection setup for that so first thing i will actually just do a reformat and i'll probably keep the bounding box there so let's take a frame somewhere or let's just use like the last frame so that's like we have more information it's the perspective is better here so i'll just take the last frame here so to do like a projection setup we need a camera first so usually if you're working inside a studio you will be getting a camera from the tracking department but i'm just going to generate the camera myself so inside nuke we can actually do this with the camera tracker node i'm just going to go here and uh, set this to global and we can just we don't have to do anything just connect it to the plate and click track and it's gonna automatically track the entire footage and then give us a camera based on the movement so yeah so tracking is done so once that is done we just go and click solve then now it's solved so we can see uh some green points some yellow points and some red points so the green points are the one which is actually tracking like properly so if you go to auto tracks we first go and delete the yellow so the yellow ones are like unsolved you delete those the red ones are like the rejected ones so you delete those two so we have a good amount of trackers here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here I'm gonna create a scene export scene and create so that's going to give us uh, a camera and then a scene so and then we also go to scan line we take a scan line render so it's basically the green stuff now so i don't really want to use the new one it's too confusing now yeah so we have this and i'm just gonna probably just put the footage on top of this and see and then we have this now that's pretty good and if we hit tab we can actually go to the 3d uh, environment of nuke and we can see the camera actually moves so that's good and uh, we can actually go and uh, turn off this point cloud we don't need that and now to bring this here we're gonna basically uh, add a card to the 3d space here so which in case in this case it's here so to exactly get like a card where we want it in the 3d space we can actually double click the camera tracker and view it from that and just select all these points in this area because that's where we're gonna add this new image which we have and just yeah and you right click there create card so that's gonna create a card and we just basically connect that to the scene so from here we can actually do two things so before that we come back to this image and i'm just gonna quickly create a roto node you click oh you get a roto node that's the shortcut 
and then I'm just gonna hit K which is copy so this is how we usually to a roto so I'm just gonna quickly mask this part and then we do a pre mult which basically copies the alpha which we created I'm just gonna use the blur on this and then we pre mult that we have this so now that we have that we can actually do it in two different ways so we can directly connect it to a card which if you do that it's gonna show it like this because i'll tell you why so to just view things as like a reference we can always take a checkerboard connect that to the card and we can see the card in 3d space now and i'm just going to go here and see so because we selected all the points on the ground the card has been aligned to the ground here and if i play this you can see so it's pretty much uh, stuck there with the ground but this is like the basic uh, step you do to track anything into like 3d space when there's like too much of perspective and all those things so because we're keeping our last frame as the reference i'll go back to the last frame now that the card and the position and it's pretty uh, locked in so we can do two things so we can directly attach the image here but the thing is uh it's gonna look a bit weird here because because of the but we want it to be like this so because it's like a flat surface the card is flat uh it looks like that like a shot by shot basis we can actually go and change the orientation of the card the card actually becomes like this so we can see the difference so it was at x y so it was actually flat on the ground and then now it becomes you know it's facing the camera now so uh, but if we do that and see it looks good here but it's gonna probably slide you can see it's sliding a lot and then it's actually going over the road so we cannot actually do that so but we need the perspective like this because this matches like really well to do that we can actually do a projection setup so projection is basically we're gonna create a projector like the name suggests like it's basically going to be a projector and we select a reference frame and then it's going to basically project it on that perspective but the camera moves in 3d space like uh i'll show you guys like what it actually means so to do a projection setup we need to bring a node called project 3d and then this has two inputs the camera and the main input so we're still going to use the same card here but instead of connecting the image directly to the uh, element it's connected to the scene so we have the card we connect the project 3d to the element and then we connect the card to the project 3d so that's how you set up that and then the camera node because we need to do a reference frame here so we're going to take the same camera which we have we're going to do a frame hold because we are reference frame is the last frame 450 we set it to 450 and then we connect the camera you know it looks weird right now uh, we probably have to adjust the scale and everything but what it basically does is if we go into the 3d space so to visualize this properly i'll probably just copy and paste this camera again so we have two cameras and i'll also connect this to the scene so and i'll keep this as the main camera and then i'll keep this as the projector this is just two make you guys understand so because this is the reference frame both these both the projector and the camera are the same frame but if we go to the first frame you can see the projector stays there it's just gonna project it from this frame wherever the camera is in on this frame but the camera moves so it's just an illusion that project something from a certain angle and but this camera still moves so that's actually the concept of uh, projection and what we can do here is a projector kind of works like it just takes the card as like the screen like a projector projector screen and uh, basically you need to go and increase the size of the screen basically because it's getting cropped here so and also we can always go to the project 3d and turn off the crop so now that we have this here we can uh it's we cannot technically move the card 
uh, to move this we need to actually go to a transform inside the element because it's too big right now and we can basically reduce the size of this and do all that there and position it wherever we want i'd say we'll, we'll do it here as having this facing the camera is not it's not gonna work so i'm just gonna change this as like flat on the ground yeah so we should still bring the car somewhere like there so our position matches this so we have like this amount of distance between between the road and this i think it matches so so that's how you do you know because we're projecting here you can see like we can see the the the, the bottom and the pit but if we go here it's not much visible so that's kind of a that's a, that's why we do projection instead of just directly keeping it on a card uh, we can also keep it on a card but projection actually works better in like certain cases like this so we can try and uh, play this and see now it kind of gives a 3d feel to just like a 2d image we were just using an image right but we still get like the illusion of a 3d model or something like that and see it's pretty stuck there do a little bit of comp on this because it looks very detached from the rest of the footage so I'm just gonna go just this accordingly we need to grade this and do all that because color and everything looks different i mean we need to do more but yeah so that's how you actually track something as you can see like it kind of gives the illusion that you know it's giving that depth for us so that's the reason why we use uh, a projection setup instead of just doing like a 2d track on this because you know we are changing perspective if you guys want this setup and this footage uh, i'll put the links down in the description you can always go and try this out um but yeah you can use this for a number of things you know for adding stuff or if you want to clean up something you can actually do that and probably project it so that the cleanup sticks to that area uh, when you're doing like a very doing like shots like where the camera movement is like having parallax and all those things or moving in a 3d space I think this is like the best method which you can use and which makes actually Nuke more powerful than After Effects because we don't have anything like this in After Effects or like a 3D environment in After Effects. It's, it's all just like 2D there and it gets very complicated to do all these kind of stuff. But it's like really simple when it comes to Nuke to do these projection setups. But yeah, something that you will need if you go into a studio because we do this a lot of times like just even for the like very small things. That's just a very small tutorial about this whole projection setup inside Nuke. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And it's Manish. Thank you guys. Bye bye.